Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, we're taking a look at the Runcam Thumb Pro. This is the 4K version. It's so light and versatile, it can be used for several different filming aspects in the hobby. So we're gonna take a look at the camera first, go over some key specs, and then I'm gonna show you the really cool party trick the Runcam has up its sleeve, and that has to do with the gyro flow stabilization capability. First, let's take a look at the camera. And before I get started, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by our very own Hobie Kenobi. Hobie really wanted to see me get this run cam and put it through its paces. I didn't really have too much interest in it because I'm not flying a lot of FPV these days, but it's so light and versatile, it can be used for several different filming aspects in the hobby. Very simple box presentation. So inside you've got the Runcam Thumb Pro. The website says this is a 16 gram camera and I have weighed it at 16 grams, comes in exactly at 16 grams and it came in at 17 with the SD card. Very simple operation up front with a single push button and on the side, unforgivable Runcam, come on, USB-C, it's time. You manufacturers need to get rid of that micro USB business, just switch over to USB-C, get in the water, everybody is in, it's fine. Around the back of the camera, you've got the sole input for power. When you have it wired up to a flight control board, notice you've got an RX connector, a TX connector, and then ground and DC 5 volt. The package comes with a connector you need for that. It's up to you to wire in your RX TX and your ground and 5 volt to a source that you can use. In the case of a flight controller, that's a really easy connection to make. In the case of fixed wing, you're going to need to use something like a BEC wired to that DC 5 volt and ground to provide power to this camera as it has no battery. Underneath this little cover is the single SD card slot. You can pull that off, and there you can see I've got a little 8 gig SD card installed. Runcam recommends a U3 SD card up to 256 gigs, so plenty of space to store your footage while you're out there flying. Aside from the camera, inside the box, a nice foam cutout if you want to store the camera inside the box for transport. That's awesome. This little cardboard separator, and then we've got a USB-A to USB micro. Come on, Runcam, get with the program. Give us USB-C. USB micro. It's terrible. There are also some screws and mounting apparatus to mount this camera on your quad. There are two types of power connectors in the bag, one with positive, negative, and then RX and TX lines to connect your flight controller. And then they give you one of these with just the positive and negative with no RX and TX. Run cam, come on, how much money did you save omitting those last two wires? Just include them. Now, if you wanna fly the Run Cam Thumb Pro on a second quad, you're gonna have to go out and buy another power connector. I don't know why they wouldn't include a four wire setup for both of these, it just seems kind of silly to me. In addition to the power wires, there are a couple of 3D printed brackets to mount the Runcam Thumb Pro on your quad or your airplane, whatever you need. And I'm sure there's a ton of this stuff out on Thingiverse if you want to download your own 3D prints. Looks like there's a little manual down there in the bottom. We're not going to worry too much about that. That's what you have me for. I do want to point out this little warning label that was affixed to the back of the camera. It says the camera only supports 5 volt input with no warranty for damage caused by wrong voltage or connecting in reverse polarity. Come on, run cam, use a diode and open up that LDO. Give us some voltage input. There's no reason in this day and age that our voltage limitations need to be 5 volt. It's easy to find regulators out there that have ranges from 3 to 15, 16 volts. No reason that we shouldn't have that or see that on these devices. That's another one of those things where they're saving a little bit of money, but it creates an operational expense for the user that just doesn't need to be there. So now instead of connecting it directly to a battery, I've got to find either a balance lead connector or I have to put a BEC in line in the event I'm not using a flight controller. The operating modes on this camera are super simple. I've got mine connected to a five volt power supply on my desk. And when I power that on, I'm greeted with this red LED. And to get the camera to start recording, as long as you've got an SD card inside, all you have to do is press the record button and off you go. You'll start seeing the red blinking light that indicates that it's recording. To stop the recording, you press the button again and it stops. I do like the configuration method on these basic run cam cameras. The way it works is you have to put the camera in parameter settings mode first, and then we'll generate a QR code on the phone and show it to the camera. So first things first, let's put it in parameter setting mode. We'll double click the power button twice, and we now see a green light. With the run cam app on your phone, you select the run cam thumb pro as your camera, and then you hit QR code configuration. And these are all the configuration options you have available. So you can change your video quality setting to medium or low, depending on what you want. I don't know why you wouldn't just use high. Loop recording will record for a specified amount of time before closing the file and saving it to your SD card. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea in case you lose power or something else goes wrong. This way you have at least some data on the SD card. 
So you can turn that on or off. You can turn on power on auto recording, which is kind of neat. That way when you plug the camera in, it immediately starts recording. You can set your resolution. There's several different modes here. 4K 30 X view, 4K 25 X view, and then 4K 30. I like that one. And for flying, I also like 1080p 60. So you can set that as your option. When you use FPV for your volume, it kind of mutes the volume a little bit. It takes some of the prop noise out of the equation. If you're just using it, say for a webcam, which you can do, by the way, you put it on normal mode. Set your shutter speed to be twice your FPS. So in my case, I do 120. And if it's too bright outside, you can get an ND filter for the Runcam Thumb Pro as well. Leave your ISO on auto and your color style at normal or flat, and then you generate your QR code. Here are some instructions for using the parameter settings mode on the camera. I'm gonna close out of that, and there's my QR code. So now with my camera with a green light, all I have to do is turn this QR code over so the camera lens can see it. And when you do that, that light will turn from green to red. That means it read the configuration and we're ready to go. The Runcam Thumb Pro has a really cool party trick and that's that it writes gyro data to a separate file that can be used to stabilize your raw footage in software like GyroFlow. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. For now, I'm just gonna handhold this camera and move it around my desk and I'm tapping it and moving it around a little bit because I don't want it to be a perfect flow. I kinda want you guys to see what it can do in terms of managing stabilization. So a quick little view of the desktop and now I'll stop that recording and we'll have something for GyroFlow to work with. After stopping the recording, I'll plug in the micro USB cable to the run cam and that will bring up a window that'll allow us to take the video file off the SD card and put it on our computer. So we'll click on DCIM and there are two files here, ThumbPro000 and the GCSV. That GCSV is your sensor data. So we'll grab both of those and drop those right here on the desktop. The next thing you'll need to do is download GyroFlow. I'll put a link in the description for you. It's just a zip file and it doesn't install. So all you do is download it, open it, and run the executable. That's it. So I have my unpacked GyroFlow in my downloads folder right here called GyroFlow Windows 64. I'll click on that. You're just looking for this executable, gyroflow.exe. Go ahead and run that. And I'll tell you, when I first ran GyroFlow for the first time about a year ago, it looked a little like a science experiment. These days, that looks like a finished product. So good job to the developer on this one. Looks really nice. So now I'll take my video file and I'll drop it right here on the center of the screen. And the next thing to do is select a lens profile. So I'll click on the search box and I'll type Runcam Thumb Pro. And I use 1080p 16 wide, so I'll click on that. And then the next thing we need to do is come down here to the bottom and add our motion data right here. So we'll hit open file and I'm gonna take the motion data off my desktop and that is thumb pro 000. I'll click on that. We see analyzing occur on the screen and now we should be able to hit play and see our stabilized data. The Runcam Thumb Pro has a really cool party trick and that's that it writes gyro data to a separate file. All right, that looks about right. So I'm gonna hit export and that's gonna put that file right there on my desktop for me. The next thing I'll do is load these two videos up side by side and let you take a look. The footage on the left is stabilized from GyroFlow and the footage on the right is the original unstabilized footage. One thing I'll point out though, when you run footage through a stabilizer, it will crop your video for you. So you wind up with a little, little bit less data, but it's stabilized and much easier to watch to be sure. So I think GyroFlow does an excellent job with the RunCam Thumbs stabilizer information to get this video in a watchable state. Well, what did you think about that stabilization? Pretty neat, isn't it? It's a neat trick that a camera can write sensor data into a file and that data can be used to stabilize footage. I think that's a very cool party trick and very handy to make these cameras a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter for our quads. So on the plus side, I'll say that I think it's fine. They did 4K 30. They've got the wide view if you wanna use that and they do 1080p 120 and 1080p 60. So if you wanna do some high speed stuff, you can. I'm not a real big fan of the button behavior. It seems like it struggles a little bit. When I press the button, it always wants to start recording, but it doesn't always wanna stop. And it can be a little fiddly getting into that parameter settings mode. So out of all the hardware gripes I have about this, that would be the big one, is the button just needs to work. I do think it's cool they have UR based control over recording so you can control whether or not the recorder is on from your radio while you're flying through a flight computer like Betaflight or iNav. I do like how they enclose the SD card with this cover. Let's face it, sometimes we crash and if we do, I don't want that SD card getting ejected where I have to go search for it. That's just no fun. So it's cool that they enclosed it. 
I'm not real sure how I feel about a lack of battery. I do respect the fact that it saves weight, but now it's left to me to wire it into my airframe, no matter what airframe I'm using. This obviously has intentions for quad use. Finally, I don't know what they're thinking with that USB micro thing. Those just have to go. It's time to get rid of those and switch over to USB-C. So Runcam, it's time to let go of USB micro. It is well past time to move to USB-C. Let's get on board with that program, all right? Well, there you go. My first look at the Runcam Thumb Pro 4K. Thanks to Hobie for sponsoring this video and sending this unit over for review. I'll do my best to get this on an airplane soon. We'll try and get some in-flight footage with it. For now, I hope you liked the content. If you did, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something. I do like the way these run. I do like the way the basic run cam cameras are set up. I do like the configuration method for these basic run cam cameras. The idea is that you use your phone to create the. I do like the way the. Oh my God. This is throwing me through an absolute. I do like the way run cam has configuration set up on. So first thing, so first, so first things first, let's put it in parameter settings. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.